my friend Doug has gifted me this 1985 Granada TV set, which is obviously gorgeous, but does it actually work? Right now, I've no idea, but you and I are going to find out together. Hello Kitten, I'm Jason Arnop, the author of The Last Days of Jack Sparks, Beast in the Basement and some Doctor Who stuff. If you're new here, you might want to hit subscribe so as not to miss any future nonsense from me. This channel is all about my obsessions such as horror, VHS, Doctor Who, retro video games and writing, so some of that might tickle your fancy. This TV used to belong to my friend Ian, who had an amazing VHS collection. Can you see the TV in the corner there, like Michael Stipe? When Ian sold up though, the TV ended up in Doug's Garage of Doom. Hence my concern as to whether it will ever work again. Doug dropped this TV over the other night along with some video shelves and this was my reaction. What a beauty. This is what it looks like when you're in a lift with an old TV and some video shelving. As soon as I got hold of this TV, I posted about it on Twitter because that's the kind of dopamine addicted freak I am. And straight away, it was clear that this tweet was really connecting with people. I found myself bombarded by anecdotes from people who remembered either having that Granada TV at home or at their school, or their dad used to be a Granada engineer, or even they used to be a Granada engineer. Perhaps this TV reminds people of what they might perceive as a simpler, cosier and downright better time when their biggest problem was having to decide between three or four TV channels. But of course there's always going to be one troll, such as Doctor Who writer James Moran. What an absolute outrage. As you can imagine, I have great plans for this machine, including playing retro video games on it and also classic old VHS. But am I about to be foiled? The outward signs aren't too bad. It's got all the dials on the front. There's a wheel cap missing, which makes it hard to roll across the carpet, but the instruction pamphlet is there on the back in its special instruction pamphlet pouch. The remote control is present and correct, much to the delight of Teletext fans on Twitter. It's finally time to plug it in and switch it on. felt like I felt something in the TV then and it wasn't an explosion so that's that's something isn't it oh look there's a red light you see that it's like the Terminator's eye it lives I know it lives obviously I'm well aware that I'm not about to suddenly get analog channels on this thing but what I would like to see is some on-screen static as a true sign of life Oh, a hiss of static. There was a discernible hiss of static. I'm not actually seeing any static though. I'm a bit unclear as to what position is on and which is off. Right, so look at this. But that seems to be only as long as I'm holding this button. As soon as, I, ah, see? There's the static we want. But I'm still holding this button, and as soon as I let go of it, it's off again. Huh. This instruction booklet from the back of the TV sadly says nothing about power buttons that refuse to stick when you push them in. But I knew that lots of you would want to have a quick look at this anyway, in all its faded glory. Wait, I think I might have found at least a ray of hope. Here, check standby button has been pressed, but then, and this looks key, check that standby switch on rear panel is in position too. Does that mean it might be possible to turn the TV on and off just using the remote? Oh God.
and the problem remains. Uh. What in the name of Satan's toast rack am I supposed to do now? Especially with my complete lack of tech know-how. I mean, at least this beauty does power up, but am I really supposed to pay someone to put their finger on the power button and keep it there for hours on end while I play Pac-Man? That doesn't strike me as viable. Is it viable? No. There is one line of inquiry I'm pursuing, and you may well have spotted this potential lead earlier in the video, so I'll let you know how that goes. And yes, I'm well aware that this is a rather frustrating Schrodinger's TV scenario with no real clear-cut conclusion as yet. I'm frustrated too. I would love to get this beauty working, especially as I can use it to entertain you in future videos. Until then, I'd love you to dive down into the comments and give me your own ideas for solving this televisual problem. I'd also really love to hear your nostalgic memories of TVs like this. Before you head down there though, take a quick look at the cover of my book American Hoarder, which actually features a TV much like this one. You can grab this book for free by signing up to my mailing list, so check out the link in the video description. If you've enjoyed this video, then please consider blah 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 blah. Thanks so very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next instalment of this terrifying TV tale. So, this is something here that's always here that's always you. I